Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. And today we're going to be taking this beautiful black walnut slab and turning it into a serving tray slash charcuterie board. It's going to be an epoxy river style board with a battleship gray epoxy that's being used. And I found a really clever way to use my CNC to make this job just a little bit easier. I was super happy with how this project turned out. So if you want to see how I built this, then stay tuned. About two months ago, I bought two walnut slabs that have been acclimating in my shop ever since. And I thought that a charcuterie board slash serving tray would be a great use for one of the slabs that I had purchased. Just from the shape and some of the accents from the wood. It's got some really beautiful sap wood on the edges that transitions into some really dark wood on the heart of the tree. So I started off by marking off a line at about 24 inches. Of course, I'm gonna whittle that down a little bit more. And I cut it using a circular saw. I still don't have a track saw, otherwise I would've used it here, but I used a couple of compression clamps, a straight edge, and my circular saw to make the cut in two different passes. I then took the slab over to the table saw and ripped it down the middle. Again, if you have a track saw, I would highly recommend using that versus what I did on the table saw because after the table saw I had to take this over to the jointer to make the edges straight so I'm having to kind of rework this same edge twice versus once if I would have had a track saw to begin with once I had straight edges I then went over to my crosscut sled and put a nice fresh 90 degree edge on both sides of both pieces of wood that are then going to be used in the molds in the next step I then ran both pieces through the thickness planer a couple times just to make sure that everything was completely even for both pieces before going into the epoxy mold. The last step before putting this into the epoxy mold is just to remove all the soft wood and the bark on the live edge of the walnut. To fabricate the epoxy mold, you essentially build a box around the pieces of wood that you have. But as I was walking around this piece of wood, I noticed a gap under one of the pieces of wood that you see right here. So I decided to pause and go back to the planer and take off a little bit more wood to eliminate that gap. Because if you think about how you would handle sanding in the next step, that would be a whole lot more complicated. So I just decided to take care of it here. I made some pencil marks on that piece of wood so that as I was running it through the planer, I knew whenever I had removed enough wood to make it flat again. And my planer made quick work of it. Double check just to make sure everything fits. And now we're ready to complete building the mold. To make this river board, I'm using a deep pour epoxy that's mixed in a two to one ratio of resin to hardener. For the coloring, I'm gonna be using a battleship gray pigment, which once it's mixed, it'll almost give it a metallic black look, which is gonna be really unique. And I think it'll complement the colors of the walnut really well. <laughs> 
Once you've got everything mixed in the right ratio and you've added the right amount of pigment, you need to stir this really well without adding a lot of air bubbles to your mixture. You can do this by hand, but for about six bucks, you can buy a mixer on Amazon to use with your drill, and it makes really quick work of this epoxy mixing. Once you've got your epoxy poured and your mold is ready to go, it's important to clamp down your pieces of wood. Because once you pour your epoxy, the wood actually becomes buoyant in the epoxy and can float and actually move. Now you see me here straddling both pieces of wood across the epoxy river area with a piece of wood. I would not recommend doing that. I'll get into the details about why I don't recommend doing that, but this is a mistake that I made that could have saved me a lot of time on the back end when it came to the sanding. But once you've got your pieces clamped down, you then begin pouring your epoxy, trying to minimize the bubbles that you're introducing as the pour goes on. After waiting a few days for the epoxy to cure, I begin gracefully removing the board from the mold. But as I flipped the board over and I looked at the area where the clamp down boards straddled the epoxy river area, I began to realize that this is gonna create some issues during the sanding phase. But more on that later. To remove the excess epoxy on top of the board, there's two ways I could have done that. Well, three ways. I could have sanded it off, which I wasn't gonna do. And it was 15 inches wide, so I could have cut two inches off so that it would have run through my thickness planer. But the third option was to use the surfacing or the facing feature of my new CNC that I've just gotten. So I took about a, oh, was it 0.1 inch depth of cut with my quarter inch router. And I just went back and forth with this thing and surfaced both sides of the table. It made an absolute mess because those epoxy shavings get everywhere, but I was able to do other things in my shop while this is running. So this is actually, something that I'm probably going to start doing a lot more of in the future because it freed me up to do other things in my shop. The final product is pretty good. You do have to do a little bit more sanding on the back end, but overall it did save a lot of time. I then took the board over to the crosscut sled to put a 90 degree edge on both sides, and then I ran it through the table saw to put a nice fresh edge on the longer side of the board as well. So as you can see, the CNC did leave some streaks in the board, which we're gonna have to sand out. So let me briefly explain what I'm gonna do with the sanding. I'm gonna start off with 120, then move up to 150, then 180, then 220, and then 320. I'm not gonna use 80 grit because I have found personally, whenever I do epoxy projects, 
the 80 grit ends up causing more issues with the epoxy uh, that takes longer to sand out on the back end. So I'm going to start out with 120. I end up spending quite a bit of time with the 120, but again, in my personal experience, not using 80 grit saves a little bit of time on the back end. Now for all the pit holes that you have in your epoxy, uh, I use a little bit of thin CA glue with some activator and those make quick work of any holes or pits that you have in your epoxy. It seems like no matter what you do in the epoxy preparation stage, you're always left with a little bit of pitting that you have to deal with. You can re-pour epoxy and wait another couple of days, but me personally, I don't like to leave projects in the shop for this long, so I prefer just to go the CA and activator route because it's a lot quicker. Recently, I've been using a new technique to finish the edges of my boards. I've used block planes to put a nice chamfered edge. I've used routers. Um, what you see me using here is a very fine grit sandpaper with my radial orbital sander. And if you hold it at a constant angle and go back evenly at a constant speed, you're left with a really nice chamfered edge along your board. Attaching the handles and the feet is pretty straightforward. You see me here just take a few extra precautionary steps to make sure that the handles are centered and they're both placed the same distance away from the edge so that whenever you look at the board with the handles on, uh, it just looks symmetrical and pleasing to the eye. I would also recommend hole punching before drilling because the handles have a pretty tight tolerance for the screws that have to be threaded into it so making sure that you get your hole exactly in the right position can be aided by a hole punch The finish I'm using on this board today is a mixture of beeswax and mineral oil, which conditions and protects the board and also brings out a lot of the natural rich colors in the walnut. Both of these materials are food safe, so any food that is served on this tray in the future is fine for human consumption. The final board turned out much better than I was expecting. The Battleship Grey Epoxy contrasts against the natural tones of the walnut much better than I was expecting. And I can see this being used at a dinner party or you know, at a family gathering where you're serving things to family members. It's a standalone piece of art that is a good conversation starter, but also very functional as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing more of these in the future because they are a little bit time consuming. You've, you've got to wait a lot for the epoxy to cure. There's a lot of sanding involved, but let me know down in the comments section below if you want to see me do more of these in the future. That's going to be it for this particular video. I did have a lot of fun making this because this is something that I haven't done before. I did like working with the walnut slab, which I had been planning on doing for quite some time. So if you liked what you saw, hit the like button, subscribe and I will see you on the next one.